Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Family Rights. Today it is January 31st and I think for the first time ever on this channel I want to do monthly reading wrap-ups. I have my Owlcrate reading journal here, I have my story graph and Goodreads statistics up and let's tell you about my reading for January. So in total I finished reading 10 books. I currently have two on the go which I will be continuing into February. This is I think slightly more diverse than I would usually read. I think also I tend to read a lot more than usual in January. I usually average somewhere between like, I don't know, five to eight books for the rest of the month of the year. But something about January, I just feel motivated. This is also the first year ever in my life where I'm not in full-time education, and I'm very interested to see how that has an impact on my reading. I have my my monthly planner, my monthly spread in the Alcrate Journal kind of colour-coded at the top by format, so I can tell you I read two audiobooks which are rereads of some of my favourite books because I find that I can only kind of absorb audiobooks if I already know what's going to happen, which is completely a me issue, but I do adore audiobooks for rereading. Okay, so my library reads were both digital ones. One of them was Nettle and Bone, which I finished and I am completely obsessed with. I gave it five stars, maybe 4.5 stars, but I will put my review here. It ranges very deeply from the very, you know, exciting thoughts of I love cannibalism and this book is like crack to me and it is like crack to me and I will comment while I'm here about the cannibalism the cannibalism is kind of mentioned not in graphic detail or anything it's pretty much in the, the first chapter of the book the cannibalism is set to like a very specific location in the world where something happened and the world building for this location is so beautiful and complex in details that I wanted to live just there in the first chapter forever so when we moved on from Cannibalism Land, I was severely disappointed. But the rest of the book is still stunning and incredible and beautiful. And probably in my, like, my favourite books of all time list, if I ever actually write that list. The other library book is The Thief Not by Kate Milford, which is the fourth book in the Green Glass House series, which I will be carrying on into February because I did not finish it. So in terms of books I actually finished, I read The Absent Underground at the start of the month, which is an advanced copy, comes out in February. And I think in summary my thoughts on that book were I enjoyed it. It's promoted as like a cosy fantasy Moulin Rouge meets Holly Black. Sapphic, slow burn, friends to lovers. And I agree with all those points. But I think my main issue with the story is how it felt a lot more that it was telling rather than showing me what was going on. And I usually don't comment on the formatting of advanced copies because it's an ebook copy and they're usually a bit scuffed anyway. But this one was like so poorly formatted that there are images cutting off big paragraphs and sections, usually the first paragraph of the chapter and the last paragraph. So it felt very disjointed and I was very confused in places what was going on just because formatting. So usually, yep, yeah, you should not take formatting into consideration, but I just straight up had to for this book so it was just so distracting. Maybe I will reread this book in a physical copy or a library copy in the future and reassess my rating, but for now I stand by that. I also read two indie books this month that make up the rest of my like digital reads. One of them was Cutting Your Teeth by an author whose name escaped me, which was in a sense about vampires. And I loved so many elements of this book. I pretty much adored the entire book except the vampires because I felt like they could have been replaced with any other supernatural creature or paranormal creature. Or they could have just not been vampires. I think the actual being a vampire had such a little effect on the story. I'm interested, because I believe this book's going to be part of a series, I'm interested to see how the vampire elements carry out across the series. But specifically in the first book, it somehow didn't feel important. The other book I read was The Binding of Blue Mountain, and I read this as part of my judging for the Indian Awards. And I will have a lovely review coming out whenever the awards were announced, but for now I'm being cryptic about it. And going back to my audiobooks, they were Radio Science by Alice Oseman here, a book that I love. And when I say that the book I'm working on writing right now is perfect for fans of Alice Oseman, I mean Radio Silence rather than like Heartstopper. And the other one was Unraveler by Frances Hardinge. And I own two copies of the book that are both beautiful. This is again one of my favourite books of all time. I'm obsessed with it. And also it being in audiobook form still brought the world to life so beautifully which I feel very hesitant about for fantasy sometimes, but this audiobook, something. Also at the start of the year I made a video picking out 12 books from my physical TBR that I was committed to reading this year, and this month I read three of them. I originally picked it out so it could be like a nice fun one book per month situation, but I think with a TBR 
on my shelves that is probably around 80 to 90 books long. I need to read a lot more than 12 books this year. So the three that I did read were Only a Monster. I enjoyed this a lot. I somehow did not know that it was about time travel at the start, so that really threw me off. But I liked this book a lot. I would read the sequel, and I'm still trying to like construct a review of how I really feel. But overall, jump scared by time travel. Every Exquisite Thing, which is like a sapphic um, picture Dorian Gray retelling. I loved pretty much all this book except the ending. In a sense, I I was going to say in a sense I wish it was more like the source material, but I really don't know how I feel about how the ending connects with the rest of the plot. I just know that I really did not like it, but I loved the other 90% of the book so strongly. Also, look at her. Look at her. Okay, the black always looks kind of smudgy on here, but this is like the Waterstones edition and love it. And the final book for my physical TBR I read was The New Percy Jackson. I've of course pre-ordered the second one. And this one, again, beautiful, a Waterstones edition, the top's plain. I love this, not in like a five-star way, but in a way that it still captures the humour and the heart and the fun of the original trilogy. Trilogy? It's five books. But down there are these five here in the end. I feel like you can tell with how this one's written that Rick is definitely trying to still capture the original voice of Percy, because the, the first five books are written in the first person, the Heroes of the Olympus series are in third person, so you kind of detach a bit from Percy's voice. But here we're straight back to third person, we're straight back with the original trio, and it has the heart again, but you can definitely tell that Rick is aware that the prime audience of Percy Jackson are now a bit older. And I love this. It's fun. How can you not like this? This is also the year that I'm committed to using Storygraph the entire way through. Ever since I've known about Storygraph, I think I import my Goodreads data each year and I think, you know what, this is the year I commit to it, and I don't. But this year, I commit to it. So, so far this year, I think I've read somewhere around 2,800 pages and 28 hours of books. My average reading is 3.78 stars. There's two books that I've not rated on Storygraph yet. First one being The Binding of Blue Mountain, as that is my review to come. The other one is Adam Mine by Kay Ankrum up here, who's one of my favourite authors of all time, because she was asking for beta readers, and I said, yes, please sign me up, Kay Ankrum, Frankenstein retelling, anything for you. And I've read that one, I've given like a brief written review, which I would again put here, basically, because obsessed, stunning, I can't wait to read the final version, but I think it's unfair to write, well, not to write, but to rate what is an early draft of the book, but it was incredible. Does it make me feel good about my own first drafts? No, not at all. But K. Ankrum, anything for you. I also love looking at the, the mood pie chart they give out, because for me it's pretty much the same every month, every year. My biggest three categories are always some combination of adventurous, emotional and dark. Mysterious is going strong, light-hearted is usually there by being a little contemporary. But it's always consistently and overwhelmingly adventurous, emotional, and dark. My genres are also pretty much the same because I'm a creature of habit. We have LGBT in the number one category, along with fantasy, closely followed by young adult, and this year horror is sneaking up there, mostly because I'm going through a horror phase, I'm reading it a lot this month, but horror is usually somewhere in the top ten, but now it's fourth. And when I do my own personal stats for the year, I do like very specific of paperback, hardback, oh in terms of format, paperback, hardback, audiobook, library physical, library digital, audiobook, advanced copy. So Storygraph obviously does not go into that level of detail because that's a me specific or some other people specific thing, but I have read 50% digital, 20% audio and 30% print. And I think that's all I have to say about the reading for this month. I wrote down my TBR for the month as that like the entire 12 book TBR that I've made in the video at the start of the year. My one for February, did have I written it out yet, will be the remaining nine books. It will be the books that I've obtained this month, which are Godkiller, Feybound, So Let Them Burn, and then in December, or at the very start of January, I got Felhart Huntsman and the Hurricane Wars and the Waterson Sale. And then I also got right on the end here, I got Voyage of the Damned in a Fairy Loot Box. So I've read three books with my physical TBR and I've gained six. The maths is not mathing, but you know, that's how it goes. 
The other thing I kind of love about this Owl Crate journal, there's very few things I love to the point where I'm inspired to create my own reading journal at the end of the year. But one thing I do love are these reading challenge pages, so I'll tell you what we've got going on here. A book written by an own voice author is every exquisite thing. A cozy fantasy book is the absinthe underground. Paranormal creature is a love interest is cutting your teeth as much as I can create the paranormal creatures. Written by an indie author is Binding on Blue Mountain. A band of misfits is Nettle and Bone. And I've got nothing on the on the hard category page yet. Thank you so much for watching this video. In the comments below, let me know about your reading goals for the year so far. Are you on target? Do you even set reading goals? I know a lot of people have seen how reading has become a competition in a sense with you know the rise of TikTok and BookTok. But if you do set targets, let me know in the comments below. If not, let me know again. I am so invested in everyone's reading except my own. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye.